now two meetings, to, uh, now a, a number of webinars across Canada. And um, so we're, we're pleased that with today's technology, we're still able to do this. And um, we thank you for uh, finding your way here to uh, still participate and uh, become more confident with Climate Field View as well. So I will uh, just um, go through a few things on today's agenda. Um, we're going to get into a bit of a just an overview here uh, called FieldView 101, uh, going through ClimateFieldView.ca, uh, the FieldView app, and then the CAB app. And uh, I've got a number of colleagues that are going to help us along. I'll introduce them in a minute. Um, we're then going to take a break after FieldView 101, and then we're going to go into FieldView 201. Um, once we've got our data in place, then uh, we'll help demonstrate how we can get more out of that data using a variety of different keywords, uh, getting more in-depth analysis, uh, using the remote view function, and then finally, um, bought our own Bob Thurwell from the Bear team, a longtime uh, agronomist with the DeKalb Seed brand, is uh, going to help us understand a little bit more about the uh, science behind uh, seed scripting specifically for uh, populations. And uh, and then I'll provide a live demo as we seek to wrap that up. Approximate time, about two hours here today. Um, so hopefully you can uh, just sit back, relax, have a coffee, and uh, and enjoy this as we go. The one thing I also want to mention is that there is an opportunity to uh, ask questions along the way. We have a variety of panelists who are prepared to uh, answer your questions uh, while we go through the webinar. Uh, you just have to go into the bottom right hand corner of the side panel and uh, you can post your questions there. Of course, we're always open for follow up after the fact as well. So the field view team, uh, our team is much larger than this across Canada, but some of the people you're gonna hear from today are, uh, are pictured here. So uh, as I said, I'm Andrew Elgersma. Uh, I manage the, the climate business here in Western Ontario, uh, interacting with dealers as well as our climate activation team. Uh, who are there to support our users and make sure that they can be uh, confident in uh, both connecting in cab, but also uh, just utilizing the overall platform. I also have my colleague from uh, Eastern Ontario, Quebec in the Maritimes, Daniel Demoizak, and uh, Dan will be presenting on today's call. And uh, then Lydia Parker as well. And uh, Lydia is a field product specialist, uh, been with the FieldView team for a number of years, and uh, she's located in the Guelph area. And uh, somebody who's contributed uh, much to this, but uh, will be presenting actually on Monday is Marvin Telsma. Uh, many of you may know Marvin. Uh, he's the product marketing manager for Canada uh, based out of London, Ontario. So uh, this is just some of the people you're going to hear from here today and uh, when we follow up again on Monday. So I want to just start a little bit about talking about uh, climate's belief and mission. Um, so we, we believe that the next breakthrough in agriculture will be utilizing data and analytics to optimize decision making. And so uh, doing so uh, specific to individual farms, individual fields uh, is really where we believe growers are going to uh, continue to go to as we see this world continue to move uh, towards a more of a digital environment. Um, it is to help all the world's farmers sustainably increase productivity with digital tools. And we believe that Climate Field View is a preferred platform to help enable this. And uh, we want to continue to invest in this space and really help growers get more out of their fields and do so in a very sustainable manner. And, uh, and that's part of what we want to achieve here today in helping you become more confident with Climate Field View. How we do that is really through our three value pillars. Uh, so number one, we want to help growers get their data in one place through centralized field data management. Um, traditionally, this has been an issue, um, you know, having several different platforms, uh, none of them talking to each other, and um, it becomes very difficult to analyze what works season to season and uh, how we can make better operating decisions. Of course, then using that data, now that we've got it in one place to make operating decisions is the next pillar. And uh, we wanna do so in a very simple and easy way that's very visual and allows us to analyze crop performance to uh, optimize those inputs, which is then our third pillar. And uh, this is where we really wanna help growers with data-driven seed and fertility subfield insights. Uh, we're also uh, looking at how we can integrate crop protection into this optimization pillar as well. And so there's a lot of ongoing efforts to continue to evolve that pipeline 
and continue to add more value to the climate field view platform. Traditionally, this is the challenge that we are trying to overcome. Uh, we see a notepad, uh, we see a couple of SD cards, a green star card, as well as a USB drive, and a computer that maybe has uh, data stored on its hard drive as well. And uh, trying to bring all of these data sources together was traditionally uh, a very, very challenging task. And it's that task that uh, climate is really trying to do by bringing in uh, all of this data into the field view and really help growers access it easily and efficiently um, so we can make better operating decisions and optimize our inputs. How we do that, how we bring all this data in one place is really the three mediums. Uh, number one, we want to be connecting in the cab. Um, you see the, the icon of the field view drive there with the combine. Um, you know, that is what we use to, to stream a lot of data. Uh, obviously, we do uh, direct connection with a lot of uh, precision planting um, displays as well and, uh, and bring that data in through connected caps. Uh, the next way is through data upload. So sometimes we've got data on a terminal and we want to be able to bring some of that data in and, uh, and we can do so uh, through our data inbox function into FieldView. Um, we also have API partners. Um, so if we think about um, John Deere as an example, um, we have an API with John Deere and uh, that allows us to do a sync with the John Deere platform to be able to bring that data back into FieldView. So those are really the three ways. Uh, we have a number of different partners, uh, a number of different ways, but uh, these are all being used by a, a number of growers to be able to help get that data into one place through Climate FieldView. Our 2020 FieldView focus, um, when it comes to product development, um, not a lot of new features for 2020, but the focus has really been on a stable and consistent enterprise solution. And so what we're really trying to do there is that it comes to a point in a, a digital platform's life that you, you need to slow building things out and start going back to just ensuring that the infrastructure is really solid, stable, consistent. And so that's really been the focus. Uh, we know that it's, it's of utmost importance for this to be uh, working consistently every, every day when a farmer is going into the cab. And so that's, uh, that's been a big focus in terms of uh, just ensuring that we've got uh, the quality we need to be able to uh, have this operate as seamless and efficient as possible in the cab. And so that's really been the, the focus here for 2020. When it comes to engagement, um, it's really around field view seed scripts. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of customers um, that are evaluating field health imagery, evaluating maps, evaluating uh, variable rate populations, hybrids. Um, and now it's, it's an opportunity as well to think about if we're compatible for doing a variable population script in corn, as an example, uh, can we uh, start to use the existing data we've been collecting and start to now uh, use the field view seed scripts tool and uh, and drive um, more optimized populations within those fields. And this is where Bob Thurwell is going to come on in the second half, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, but we're having lots of great conversations uh, with customers uh, interested in this area and how we can uh, get more yield with a very similar seed investment. So let's, and uh, we're going to uh, start with um, climatefieldview.ca and then follow it up with uh, FieldView app and CAB app demonstrations as well. So when you uh, get into your FieldView account, um, it should look something similar to this. Um, one of the, the first things that we often recommend is looking at uh, the menus and just understanding what you're going to, to need to look for. So number one, we wanna look at uh, fields is gonna be uh, something that's frequently used. Um, I'm gonna go through these other tabs as, as we get going here. But really, we want to look at fields. Uh, we're going to want to add some fields. But before we do that, I want to take you back over to settings. And in settings, um, we can go to sharing. Sharing is important for a couple of reasons. It is uh, number one, if you want it to be invoiced by your dealer, um, you can go into sharing and you'll need to share with your dealer as an example um, to be able to allow them to, uh, to invoice you into FieldView. 
Um, the other way, though, is, is, and this is maybe even more important for most growers, is thinking about how we want to interact with data. So typically, most farmers are not operating within a silo. They, they have advisors, whether it's an agronomist, whether it's the retailer, uh, whether it's a brother, son, daughter that they're working with. And um, it's it's this that sometimes works really nice to be able to share your field view account and enable uh, multiple people to be able to look at that information and help come to conclusions together on some of the insights that's coming out of that. So the nice part is with this feature is uh, you can see who um, which people ha you have shared with and and who's shared with you. And if you want to invite a specific uh, person. Uh, you can do so um, by typing their climate field view email account, and you can then invite them to share. Okay. So I've uh, I've asked in this case Lydia to share her operation with me, um, so we can do it that way. Um, the other way is to then just share my information um, with Lydia as an example. And I can look at sharing my whole operation. I could share a specific farm, or I could look at just sharing a field. If I want to share a field with Lydia as an example, uh, I could go here, I could go review. Uh, now I see it looks like I'm uh, I'm sharing um, this field, and I can then choose to include yield data or I can choose to exclude yield data. So you're enabled to be in control of how much information you wish to share. So if you're including yield data, you can still see things like field health imagery. Uh, somebody can interact on scouting with you and we'll show you some of that as we get deeper into field view. Um, but a nice function um, to be able to share really as little or as much as you like uh, with somebody with whom um, could act as an advisor with you and help you get a little bit more out of field view. Okay, so it shows I've invited and I can always cancel that inf invitation. The other thing I can do is, is let's say that I no longer want to share uh, with Dan DeMoyzak. Uh, I could click remove and, um, and I can then choose to have that person removed if for some reason I want to do that. Um, so you're really in control of, of sharing this information. Um, there's no notification that goes to uh, the person for whom you remove. Um, so just so you're aware, um, this is how that functionality can uh, benefit you. So let's get into fields a minute, and we're going to focus on drawing a field. Um, so what drawing a field does is, is number one, um, what we draw here uh, will automatically feed over to um, some of the well, all of the other apps. So if we think about the FieldView app and the Cab app, uh, what I draw here will be synced over onto those apps. So um, that that's one consideration. The other is that field health imagery comes in within 24 hours, giving you three years of field health imagery into um, your FieldView account. So uh, that's really nice to start to evaluate what did we learn maybe in a, uh, a specific year um, or multiple years that we start to see a trend maybe on that field health. And, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that in, uh, in a little while here uh, because some of those images really do help us in terms of gaining efficiencies, scouting, but also being able to use them for even developing things like seed scripts. <clears throat> so I'm gonna uh, start to draw a field here. Um, first thing I'm gonna, uh, gonna call it I'm going to just call it Gordonville West. Um, I'm going to use myself as the client and uh, I'm going to go under my own farm name here. I'm going to go to draw and we have polygon, rectangle, and circle. Polygon. And I'm going to just drop points using my mouse. And I can drop as many points as I like. And I can go across here. I could just go straight across or I can drop some additional points. Do that. And then I'm, what I'm gonna do is uh, if, if you look here, you can click on the small dots, which will give you more dots if you wanna start to get more precise. Uh, if you click on a big dot, it'll give you one less dot or two less dots there. So, um, so I'm going to go back 
and I'm going to uh, click the map to add more points, then click the final point again. So I'm going to click that final point again, and uh, now I've got that map, and it says it's approximately 92 acres. I'm going to save that, and now I've got my field boundary. Now let's say uh, I want to go back and I want to um, be able to edit this boundary. I want to clean up maybe that, that area in the corner here. I can go fields, Gordonville, and uh, that's the wrong one. Back here a minute and go cancel. Back to west. I can just go back and drag these points in after I've clicked that pencil icon. Okay. Now you can see it looks like there's perhaps a, a grass laneway, grass waterway here. Um, we can actually um, work with a tool that helps remove that. Um, so we really start to understand how many true farming acres we have. So if I go back to edit, and I want to go remove as an example, uh, I can look at doing a polygon again. I can remove a rectangle, circle, waterway, entire shape. They're all so I can go waterway, and I'm just going to click the points along here, and I'm going to click this point again, and it says maybe could it be five meters? I'm going to say it's three meters in this case. I'm going to go done, and now we've that that grass waterway. Okay, if we want to edit that a little bit, we can still do so. And we just have to make sure that we're cognizant that there's two sides to this water. We do so. It always helps to be as magnified as we can where we need to do something like this. Okay, so the tool really helps you along, as you can see, as I go through some of that. Okay, so we're going to save that now. And um, from here now, um, like I said, uh, our data will start to show up here when we have data for this field. Um, field health imagery um, historically will come in and uh, we'll start to see that we can toggle through different seasons. So usually that takes uh, no more than 24 hours to come into this field. And we've got a toggle up here where we can uh, go through that and, and look at the in-season field health imagery from various different years. The other, um, the other thing that's really interesting with this tool is going through weather. Um, before we get into field health imagery, I'm going to go scroll down and I'm going to go to weather. And um, what we'll see are several different insights. So first, we'll offer a forecast. Uh, so you can look at there's an hourly forecast. There's a seven day forecast that's in here. Uh, but the past weather is actually really quite interesting. So we use a lot of IBM weather models uh, to bring all of this information together, which uses a variety of different sources. Um, we can then look at harvest year. So say we want to look at 2019, and this is January to December, uh, but maybe we just wanted to look at um, harvest years and going from, uh, say, June or May 31st, say, all the way to October 31st. And we can go ahead, have a look at that. Um, that's all of the in terms of the precipitation so you can see you know we definitely after having a very wet spring we, we got into more of a, a drier period um, and then certainly had a little more moisture in the fall um, we can then compare that to the 30-year average and we'll see a trend line and uh, and you can see under this circumstance um, the 30-year average was actually um, higher than what we saw in 2019 for this specific location um, you know, we can see the daily amounts as well, and uh, so um, this is what would be in our typical, the yellow would, would be our typical 30-year, uh, the blue would be what happened this past growing season. No real high-intensity 
rains on this specific location. And then we can also look at that for high and low temperatures. So if we were concerned about a, a specific temperature event, we can come in here and have a look and see if we want to validate that. The other thing we can do is anytime we see this, uh, this book type of icon, um, it offers a split screen. So if we wanted to, uh, to compare um, 2019 as an example um, and compare that to 2018, um, we can do that. And uh, we can then uh, look, maybe we wanted to go back and, and look at January all the way to December. And we can go ahead and, and have a look at, at those insights. So, uh, so that's a, a nice way to just be able to um, look at, at data um, with an easy to view uh, analysis tool, allowing us to split screen there. So moving on from weather, um, we can all field health images inside um, the field view website. Um, so you'll see there's scouting and there's vegetation. Um, so scouting basically helps us identify the lower biomass areas from the higher biomass areas within a field. Um, it's really field specific. So it really looks at those fields, tries to understand what's happening within uh, a field and really drawing your eye towards those red areas that could be uh, significantly different from the green. If we go to vegetation, this is more of an index based um, approach um, that has a filter by crop and um, and starts to identify it from more of a uh, lower to higher biomass area, but more of a consistent uh, filter, if you will, uh, than calling out those uh, greens, yellows and reds uh, the way the scouting one is, which is more designed to draw your eye to specific areas of concern or specific areas of higher biomass that may be worth um, looking at in comparison to the rest of the field. You can see once we have planting information, uh, growing degree units uh, will pop up as well, and it starts to look at, at what percent of that field is in a low biomass concentration um, relative to the other areas. And so uh, that's just there to help you trend as you want to start to scroll through. Okay, so this can be very valuable. Generally, what happens is we use the FieldView website, climatefieldview.ca, log in to be basically set up our account, um, make prescriptions, fix data. Um, but generally, users are moving to the iPad or their iPhone uh, or Android devices in some cases to be able to uh, do the scouting, um, to be able to be in the cab and whatnot. So often we, we onboard here. <laughs> excuse me we do some some tasks such as creating prescriptions but once we get in season we're moving towards the ipad or tablet type of approach the other uh, component i'll show you here is around um data inbox and that inbox is a means that we can pull data that perhaps we have historical reference to uh, that we want to get into field view um, and can't bring it in any other way um, because it, it's likely historical. So we can't live stream it as an example, but we want to be able to utilize it. So if we go to import, uh, this brings up the data inbox for field view. And uh, what you'll see here is some basic instructions. So first of all, we can check for file compatibility. Uh, this will take us to a support page to look at if the files we want to import are from a compatible provider and, and a compatible file type. Um, we also have a link here in terms of how to zip your files. So zipping your files is differently done on a Mac than it is on a PC. So this will just help us through how to zip them. Uh, we can also see if we've got data on a My John Deere account, uh, we can connect these accounts and bring it in much more seamlessly without a USB through FieldView um, connecting to um, My John Deere through a John Deere sync. So that option is there as well. And um, so then from there, we can go upload file and we can start to bring this data in. Sometimes it will take some time uh, depending on the number of files and the file size, but this will all uh, then enable us to bring it into field view and then apply it to specific fields and be able to get value out of that information and start to make decisions with it. component is around um, settings and then going to fix data. So there can be situations where maybe we didn't capture a hybrid or maybe we ended up uh, replanting into soybeans 
And um, under those uh, situations, we can actually look at uh, uh, making a fix to that data within uh, the fixed data on your operation function within climatefieldview.ca. So if I want to look at this demo seed scripts uh, plot from 2018, um, we can see the year here that we can filter. Uh, we can then go in, we can click edit, and we can choose which data we want to replace. So in this case, we can change crop or we can change hybrid. So let's say we wanted to change hybrid. Um, the original hybrid, in this case, it wasn't labeled as a specific uh, hybrid name because this was running a static rate versus variable rate trial. But we could name that from static rate and come back in and we could type in as an example. Um, DKC 49 hybrid and I could then click replace and that would replace the static rate label with DKC 4909. So that's a nice function to be able to make sure we've got the right information. This is really a data quality tool and uh, really helps us in just making sure that if for some reason something wasn't taken down correctly inside the cab, um, then this is an opportunity to go back and fix that. Again, we can also fix uh, it by crop if we need to do. And we can toggle between planting files and harvest files for fixing data. So I'm gonna exit from there and uh, I'm now um, going to hand it over to uh, my colleague, Dan, who is uh, going to now uh, take us through uh, the field view app, otherwise known as the black app. And uh, he'll go in a little bit deeper into detail into some of the functions that I've just shared with us here from climatefieldview.ca. All right, <clears throat> thank you, Andrew. I'm just gonna switch over my screen here. Access, and there we are. And we'll go with our time there and share my iPad screen. So here we are. Uh, this is essentially the, the field view app you see on the top left hand corner with the, the black and yellow logo. Uh, what we're looking at is basically the Facebook of my fields type of app, right? All the information you're putting into that, that platform is what you want to get at. Um, this is a daily use type tool where it has cross functionality, has regular updates and shareability functions. Uh, so basically, this tool can be used on all mobile devices, including i devices, so I, Apple uh, iPads, iPhones, and/or Samsung devices. So let's go ahead and click on that black app or the Field View app, sorry, at the top corner. And luckily, with the new update on our iPads, I've got this great little pointer here, so you guys can see exactly where I'll be uh, pointing on my iPad and clicking on them. Essentially, this tool has been used to simplify life, right? So we see these five boxes here with a lot of information. It'll be easy to just get right into them and start understanding what's happening on the farm. So let's top start, start right here at the top right hand, left hand corner. What do we get from this type of tool here? So like Andrew was saying earlier, uh, you can bring in your, your field boundaries by either importing them or drawing them. And once you do that, we get information that starts flowing into the, uh, the system uh, within the 24 hour period. In this case, we're getting field or we're getting rainfall for each of those fields. What's happening is there's an algorithm that's combining uh, local weather stations and radar devices or radar um, weather stations. And we're able to basically create uh, a simile rainfall for each one of your fields within a square kilometer. So it's a lot better than having multiple uh, rain gauges across the farm. This really targets in within those specific fields and how much rain you've had in those fields. Again, this is a tool to decide, am I going to do work today in that field? Am I going to go across and maybe scout those fields today? Uh, this is a great way to look at those fields without having to get into the pickup and driving to those specific fields. So here we're seeing that we can sort, say, by yesterday's rainfall, high or low. So here, are the, these fields here, I have relative traces amounts of rain. And if I sort the other way, these are my wetter fields. And I can understand if I had, you know, 5, 6, 10, 12 millimeters of rain, I may decide to wait till the afternoon or tomorrow morning before walking those fields. Same idea since midnight, we get how much precipitation we've had since the last uh, since, since last midnight. The interesting part is a season to date. So this is basically a cumulative uh, where rain uh, fall since either January 1st, or if you have a planting date in that particular year, it'll go from that uh, the early planting date to uh, to today. So we'll have an accumulated uh, season to date uh, update. What's great here is that every 72 hours, there is a correction with local weather stations to our model so that these numbers are actually very, very precise. 
and then we can compare them to the last 10 year average. There's another great tool up here, the radar. If we click on our radar, uh, we'll see basically uh, accumulations or clouds across the, the, the area. It takes a couple seconds to, to load up here. Uh, we can see basically weather patterns for the next four hours or the last 24 hours or turn the radar completely off. So again, it's a way to decide, am I going to work in those fields today? Are the clouds coming in? How much time do I have to do to do my work today? If we go back to the original page or the first page, there's a couple ways of doing that. You can either click on the back button here at the top corner or at the overview button here on the bottom brings us to our main page. Now, we're going to look at the field health images. Andrew had touched on this a little while ago, uh, but I'll go into more detail as to why we want to get into these, uh, these types of Im images. There are three types of images in the climate, view, uh, climate field view platform. Uh, we're going to start with the vegetation images. Now, what we're seeing here is essentially biomass, right? So as soon as you have your boundaries into the, the platform, we're going to get satellite images for the last three years and so on and so forth. And you'll have an image roughly so give or take from mid-April to mid-October. What we're seeing here is anything that's green, anything growing in your fields will start showing up on these images. So if you look at the vegetation uh, tab here at the top, we're seeing that any kind of fields that has relatively gray or brown colors like these ones over here, uh, there's either very little or no biomass whatsoever. So these fields might be tilled or might still have snow on them. There's just really nothing going on in those fields. Here, look at the east field. You see a little bit of yellow start to show up. So that's likely a, uh, let's say October 13th. That's uh, likely a, maybe a soybean field that's been drying down. Still a few leaves down here, uh, still not quite dry. We might leave it a couple more days before actually going and combining that particular field. And as we go through the season, you'll see more and more colors showing up into you know, greens and dark greens. And we'll see uh, you know, more and more biomass showing up in that field. The great thing about this is that each of these fields are on the same scale, the same amount of biomass. So when you're looking at grays and browns in one field and grays and browns in another field, it's roughly the same amount of biomass. And as they start to mature and get more, more vegetation in those fields, we can compare field to field. In other words, I can save time by choosing which fields I really want to scout in the next 24 hours or so, right? So if I wake up in the morning and I decide, hey, I got time to maybe see my two top fields, or I want to see two fields today, then I have to go to do groceries, I have to work in the shop, and so on and so forth. Here I can really decide, what are my priorities? Do I see any problems? If I look at this map, I would say maybe here in my east field, I get a little bit of uh, yellow matter. I want to go check that out. Is that residual weeds? Is that something coming out of the ground? Or is that something not dying fast enough? So again, prioritizing my time based on these, uh, these vegetation images. If I skip over to the scouting section here, so scout essentially like turning the contrast on your TV to maximum, right? It really pulls out those details, the, the highs and lows of your field. What we're seeing here is the high and the low points of biomass or vegetation in each one of your fields. It doesn't mean it's bad, it doesn't mean it's great. It just means here's the highest and here's the lowest points of those fields. The difference is that we can no longer compare field to field. For example, let's say our field number one here, we see the red area versus the green area. There might be a very small difference. Let's just call it, I don't know, maybe a soybean field and you have maybe an inch difference between a couple of different hybrids, maybe a late and, a, and, a, and an early one. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference in terms of biomass. And let's grab an example, let's say for fun, uh, let's grab this one, field number three. You see some a lot of red around the area. That could be damage from the deer, right? Or uh, you know, wildlife damage. It could be a great corn field. Uh, right in the middle, you get you know, 10, 12, 14 foot corn. And on the sides, completely devastated by maybe bears or deer or turkeys, whatever you want. And here you see that major damage. So the highs and lows are not equivalent on each one of those fields. So let's dive in a little bit deeper and how we can actually view these types of images on the farm, right? So let's say I go ahead and I'm gonna grab an image from my personal account and it'll really kind of show why we're using these types of images in the field view platform. Let me go to my demo prescription and I'm gonna run all the way back to 2017. You see here, there's a history of what's going on in my field uh, at my fingertips. You know, if you have an agronomist, you're sharing this information with your, your local vendors or your, your agronomist, uh, it's instant instant access. They can go ahead and click on that, say, 2017. And let's look at our field health images. So let's say I've selected this particular field. I'm going to scroll here on the uh, left-hand side, and I'm going to choose a field, let's say, uh, July 21st. I got a better example. Let's go here on August 26th. And I'm looking at this field, and I'm seeing some highs and low points, right? Even, say, September 9th, even more contrast. So we have the, the red sections here in the middle of the field and the green sections over here. 
maybe I know this field quite well, right? Typically, uh, these corners here where you see a lot of red, uh, that might be already low areas of that field, might be compaction areas, might be historically uh, sandy areas, and that's maybe normal for my field. Whereas this section here, more of a red section in the middle of that field, that might not be typical for this particular field. I want to pay a little more attention to that. And how would I do that? Well, what I could do is a couple of different tools we have, uh, we can go ahead and use. If we look at the bottom corner, we have the pins and the regions. Now these tools really identify what's happening in that field. Before I do that, however, I talked earlier about three types of images, right? So we're looking at vegetation, which is here, the scouting image. But then we have this other one, this is a little cloud here in the bottom, and this is the true image. What that is, is you're looking at the actual image from the satellite. So I already see that, hey, we got some cloud shadows here. I got a little bit of clouds here. That might not be a reliable picture. If I'm looking at August 25th, however, there is a part of the algorithm where it'll take those clouds and cloud images or cloud um, shadows out of the picture. So we see an image like that one. We know we cannot rely on that type of picture. We go back to August 26th. Let's just go ahead and ground truth that. We'll click on that image just to make sure it is a clear image. And yes, I would say this is a good, reliable image. I'm ready to make decisions on this type of picture. I'll go ahead and click on the cloud, bring back our field's images. And now this area of that field I want to identify, maybe I want to send uh, my, my daughter down there to do some field scouting. Maybe I want to send my agronomist or special field specialist or soil specialist, uh, and I'm in my office or I might be somewhere else and out of town and can't physically get to my, my field. What I can do, however, is here in the bottom corner, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my pin. And I'm gonna drop that pin right here in that red zone. And from here, I'm gonna ask them maybe to uh, please verify. Please verify. And I'll just go ahead and hit done, save. What that does, it'll notify my, whoever's sharing with me, whoever I've shared my fields with, that there's a new pin, there's a, there's a there's a problem in my field. I want somebody to go ahead and check that out. So what I can do is I can either click on that on that pin directly. And again, the pin will be dropped in the other person's box. Or if I really need to advise them immediately, it might be an emergency, it might be something critical at the, you'll see right here, I'll use grab my mouse, sorry, grab my mouse. There's this little box here with an arrow. If I click on here, I can immediately send uh, basically a messenger or a text or whatever I want to my colleagues and ask them, hey, can you come down and please verify this area for me? What that will allow them to do is share that exact same map. So the agronomist, the, the seed vendor, my daughter, whoever is out there and, and willing to help me out can walk to this field and have the exact same image on their cell phone, whether it's their Samsung or their iPhone, whatever it is. They can literally just park here at the farm, have this exact image and walk over to that pin. To do so, if we look here at the top right hand corner, we can activate show current location. What that does is activates the GPS in their phone and allows them to see that little blue dot that would be circling around, just like you were if you're in your car and driving around, you see where you are on the map. The same idea here, you'd be parked there, you can literally walk to that particular zone and understand what's happening. What's great is because you're sharing the, the fields, we're all working on the same platform. It's not a photocopy of the, the platform. So if somebody does work in one copy, it doesn't show up on the other. In this case, it does. We're all working from the same field, from the same data. So that person who does walk that field can show up here and decide, listen, hey, we got a problem in this particular corner. Uh, this might be compaction. It might be white mold. It might be any, any, any kind of problems. So instead of a pin, pins are really great to indicate small areas, right? Whether it's a glyphosate resistant weed, whether it's telephone pole, whether it's a rock, that marks it really well. But in my case, I just want to maybe mark it with some way different. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that pin. Go ahead and delete that right here. And instead, I'm gonna replace that with a zone right here, that little circle in the bottom corner. And with my finger in the field on my phone, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a zone around here. And that will indicate there's a problem. And I'm at a note. And I could say uh, mold. I can add some comments, need a fungicide at a certain rate. I can add pictures to this field. I can change it from seasonal to permanent, change the colors. Maybe it's a red zone because it's a problem area. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And go ahead and close it. So now that zone uh, will be indicated in my field and I could decide to make uh, changes to that field. You know, it, it, let's say it would happen to be mold. Well, maybe I want to spray my field, but instead of spraying the entire field, I could just spray the, the north half as opposed to the entire field. This might be again, typical for my field and I might not want to spray it. 
So you can make decisions based on these particular zones. But in the end, uh, we want to compare these zones to actual facts, exactly what's going on in my fields, right? So to do that, I'm going to compare it to, say, my yield map. Again, it always comes back to yield. We'll split our screen here at the top corner, and I'm going to click on my field health image. And instead of these applications, I'm going to click back on my map and find different types of information that I've stored into my application here, right? So I've got planting maps that came either from my planter, my air seeder, or manually done, my in-season maps, or harvest maps. In my case, of course, I want harvest maps that came straight from my own combine. Uh, I got different selections here. And let's go ahead and look at yield. How do, was that zone affected uh, by, by that particular zone? So if I click here, let's see if I go right on the cross and I let go. It zooms into that same spot. Now I can understand what happened. If I go ahead and click on that zone, all that information that I've stored in my iPad, like Andrew was saying earlier, we've got various sources of information. They're all coming together. I might have a green planter with a red tractor and maybe a yellow combine. Doesn't matter. It all comes back together. And now we start comparing. Why am I doing this? So in this zone, I have 1.9 acres that are harvested at 14.4 moisture. And my average yield was 47 bushels per acre. Was that good or was that bad? Well, let's find out. We want to compare a similar zone in that field and that kind of decide, is that a good thing or a bad thing? So what I'll do is I'll just grab that, so that tool again. I'm just going to circle zone something right around here, give or take. And now I'm going to see different yields. So within seconds, I can compare what's going on in my field uh, in terms of field health images, in terms of anything I've done or any kind of work I've done in that field and start comparing for better decisions next year. So by seeing I got 55 bushels per acre, and let's say I did spray that, uh, was that worth the money? Is that something I would do again next year? In my case, yes, absolutely. And there the footing. Again, this is all my data from my machinery. Nobody's telling me any different. This is literally from all the data I've harvested from my particular fields. Now, I'm gonna show you another example of this of those field health images and how we've used them in the past. Um, I'll run over to my R1A Field, I think I passed it. Yeah, R1A. And I'm going to go back into my soy season. And of course, here we obviously did a soybean trial, but here's why I'm using this particular image. If I go back, say, to July 30th, right? I have this field health image, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and park my truck I'm using this mouse. I'm going to go ahead and park my truck right over here. And I'm going to walk this field and kind of scout and see what's happening in my field. So, I'm walking across and I see this red spot. Of course, that's exactly where I'm gonna walk. And what do I find here? Well, let's find out. I grab a pin, look at this, I've got a hydro pole. So now I'm gonna mark that. I'm gonna put that a purple pin. I'm gonna make sure I have that highlighted. And what I'm gonna do is that combine operator that comes back in that field in, in fall, uh, will now, I'll just give them a heads up. Every time you see a purple pin, that could be an obstacle. It might be a big rock, might be a stump, might be a uh, hydro pole. Just be careful. I know you get sleepy in the combine sometimes, just be careful for the purple pins. They're coming up and they're dangerous. Um, and close that. Another interesting factor in this one is a lot of these pins I use is, we know we're doing test plots in the field. How hard are these to find sometimes, right? <laughs> we've, we've done our, our tests in the fields and these things get wrecked, right? The sprayer goes over them. They get wrecked. They go in the mud. They go down in the dirt. Nobody can find them. Well, I can find them now. Once I've got a picture of them, I've indicated them with my pins. I can walk within a three-foot radius of that pin. I don't care if the corn is 12 feet tall. I will find that pin. I know exactly what hybrid was in what area and you know, locate that back again. But what I really wanted to show you on this particular image is here. As I was walking out of the field, I noticed something here on the leaves. So Again, this is the agronomist. This is somebody walking through your field and just happen to notice something. Look at this, spider mites. And if I zoomed in a little bit, should be able to see them. It might not be super clear, but they're there. There's some spider mites on that on that leaf. And I noticed it because the leaves had brown spots on them. So I went ahead and took a picture. I advised the, the producer. I said, hey, listen, well, you know, spider mites are detected. You might want to take uh, heed of that. You know, see what you can do. You might want to spray them or you might want to do something. The producer decided, no, you know what? It's such a small area. The rain's coming in the next few days. I expect that to wash, it, that wash them out. And I don't think it's going to be a big problem for me. I could tell you, I have not been back in that field for a few months after, but it had become a bigger problem because if we look here on the left-hand side on August 9th, keep your eye here in the corner where I grabbed that pin. If I change my field health image, right away you see that damage, right? You see how the spread came out. Again, I didn't have to get in the pickup truck. I didn't have to drive over to the field. I realized that there was a bigger problem. It did spread. 
uh, just by using these field health images. So it's a great example on how to use them. And again, how accurate are these images? Well, let's just find out here in a second. What I did is I parked my pickup truck here on that yellow pin, and I took a picture across this field here. So typically, if we're looking at the yellow, or sorry, at the, the red areas, that should be drier areas, right? It should be less biomass, drier areas. Whereas here, kind of that green strip, we should see some kind of a, you know, augmented biomass, a little bit more leaf matter. Let's go ahead and ground truth that. If I click on that pin and show you the picture I took from my truck, exactly what we're seeing. Like I said, this is that dead area, right? That big red zone, that's this over here. On this side here, we have again, that dry, that dead zone. And we have one strip of green right down the middle. So whether it's a different hybrid or whatever happened there, we see there's a problem. How can I use that? What kind of tool is this, could this be mean for me? Well, maybe if you're ready to go combining, maybe you've scouted this field, maybe you've walked across or drove around these streets here and you saw that, you know what, my field looks relatively dry, but I'm seeing this green spot in the middle of that field. I may not have caught that earlier. Uh, I might want to check that, or I might want to just wait a week before combining that field and, and not waste my time having to go around that spot and having to come back. So it's another way to, to really get that, uh, that information out. And last but not least, I just want to show you real quick here. I've outlined this in a little zone here. Again, we can do tests in the field, whether it's different hybrids, different seeding rates, uh, different planting depths, uh, different fungicides, whatever you want, do di different trials. We can go ahead and do that from this field here. So we click on this zone and you'll see right away that all that information from the planter, from the, the combine, everything comes together instantly. And we see a bunch of different numbers here. What kind of yields, population, elevation, by planter date, and so on and so forth, uh, instantly. So it's a great way to grab that information. Uh, with very, very little effort. Sometimes, you know, we're in a rush. We don't have time to get the way wag into the field. Uh, sometimes, you know what, I don't have time to call my agronomist to come down and, and we'll inspect every single piece of that field. The rain's coming. I just want to get in the comp. Well, this is a great way to get that done. Another way we can look at this is, again, we're looking at different trials. Uh, now, we've been quite fortunate that uh, one of our co-workers, Daryl Whittington, uh, did a trial in one of those fields here last year. I believe it was a cornfield, yeah. And you'll notice here, uh, he's gotten different zones. So if I scroll down, I will show you the different zones. There we go. So I'm looking here on the side, I've got my starter. I've got no pro line, no pro line, pro line, and pro line. We can just go ahead and zoom into these fields and understand exactly what's going on. You'll notice if I'm going to hide, watch. I'm going to hide these zones. Watch where these zones are. So I got this red zone here, this red zone here with no pro line. I've got two zones side by side with ProLine and I've got some starter on this end. Watch when I go ahead and hide my region notes. And you'll actually see these zones are still here in the fields, right? The no ProLine, ProLine, no ProLine, ProLine, and the starter. It actually does show up in the biomass quite well. And then of course, we wanna compare that to our yield. We go right ahead in here, we'll just click on this area. And it'll show us, here we go. We've got a couple different hybrids. With a no pro line, look right beside it here. Oops, sorry, I gotta go close first. Click on the one right beside it here. And we see the effects right away. There was a yield difference. There was a uh, population was relatively the same. Elevation was relatively the same. So it basically shows side-by-side -side comparisons in a glance very, very quickly without having to do a whole lot of extra work to get that type of data. Now, if I go back, I wanna go back to our main page. Again, you can click on the back button or the overview button to bring me back to the same spot. And I'm gonna go back onto my account and see what we're seeing here is basically everybody who's shared with me. So let's say I'm an advisor, I'm an agronomist, I can open up one of these accounts uh, virtually free and have people share with me. So basically I could have access to all my customers information, those who've shared with me, who've decided to share with me and go and work in those particular fields and help them out as much as I can. What I want to look here is the analysis, right? So the analysis tool basically puts everything back together. That's where the rubber meets the road. So what we're looking at here is my 2019 soybeans. There we go, 2019 soybeans. And I can see all the different crops, different years, and kind of run through whatever I want historically. This is a great way. If you're sitting down with your insurance broker or your banker or whoever, your advisor, uh, you can grab through both of these numbers very, very quickly at a, at a glance, right? You have your cell phone with you in your pocket anyway. Uh, the, you know, they want some historical information. Grab your cell phone. It's there at your fingertips. It's so accessible. It's so easy. As long as you put your information in the platform, you can grab that for information back out. Now, what are we seeing here, right? You typically would sit down with your, your seed advisor uh, probably late fall, and you don't have a whole lot of time because you want to get back in that field as soon as you can. 
You want to make some quick decisions. Maybe it's on hybrids. Maybe it's on certain fields where you want to play certain things. Uh, you don't always have time to go back to your notes. Well, here's the great way to do it, right? So if I'm looking at my yield analysis, going through my 2019 soybeans, I can see here I'm sorting by field or by variety. Let's go ahead and start just with the field tab here, right? So in this field, or in these all these fields, I've har harvested 298, 299 acres of soybeans at 13.5 moisture average for the whole farm. And the average yield was 49 bushels per acre. We're seeing here our 49 bushels per acre. That's that yellow line, the orange line kind of going down the middle. And we start comparing which fields are performing, overperforming the average and which fields are underperforming the average. But again, why? What's the moral of that story? Why do I want to find that out? Well, there's a couple different things. One, let's say I'm renting that land, right? And the landowner wants another few bucks per acre. Do I really want to pay those few bucks an acre? Typically, the answer is, well, if I don't do it, the neighbor will. But now we can see, well, am I making money on this field? Am I not making money on this field? This is not just a clear answer. We're going to have to dig in a little bit deeper. We'll find out what's going on. But it gives us a better gut feeling. Should I proceed with that or should I not proceed with that? What's going on? I'll get back to this one in just a quick second. But I just want to jump over to varieties. So we'll click on the varieties. Again, that example where you know, your seed dealer comes to the office and decides, hey, we need to book some seeds for next year. Uh, which ones you want to get into? So here we see, well, you know, our custom, our hybrid here at 1.2 is performing at 57 bushels per acre on average. I might want to keep that one for next year. Uh, this one here, the hybrid 1.0 performing at 48, might want to keep that one. Whereas hybrid 0.8, uh, it's not so great. It's not so strong in the farm. There might be other ones that, that might do better on my particular farm, depending on particular land. We can zoom into more and more of this detail, right? If we look here on the right-hand side, we see this little arrow. Let's dig into that. So let's say our hybrid 0.8 is not working so well. Is it well placed? Click on here. Well, you know what? If it's sitting on East Field, it actually does quite well. So maybe the hybrid's not the problem. Maybe it's the placement that's the problem. So it's a different way of looking at the same problem or different solutions. Now we know that that particular hybrid does not perform well in North Field. Let's go ahead and change that. Let's find something else that'll fit there. And that's why your advisors are still very important to the solution. This is not a platform that replaces our agronomist. This is a tool for the agronomist, for the producer to make better decisions, informed decisions on your data. So let's go find out what's happening here in that north field. Let's go ahead and click back here. Go back to my fields. And I see north field. We click on there. You'll notice that all these hybrids are actually performing relatively low on the entire field. So maybe it's not a hybrid problem. Maybe it's a soil problem. Maybe it's something else. Uh, maybe it's a fertility problem, something we really want to analyze. Uh, we could actually even dig into this a little further. We click on this yield map on the top right-hand corner. We can start digging in. Now, I've left this like this on purpose, right? This is my yield map. If you look here, so basically my yield map for 2019. And this is just an ugly map, right? This is not something I can actually use. So what I can do is I can edit that side feature here. So I can click on edit on the scale. Um, maybe I want to go down to, oops, sorry. Maybe I'll go down to seven and let's change this from 100 to maybe 50. Let's see what happens. A little bit better. We can play around the scale and, and make it a little bit nicer. 30. There, that's a little bit better. Brings out some of those features, right? Now I can understand what's the high, what's the low of my field. And we want to compare again, what's going on in those areas. I can tell you, I split my screen over my yield and change that map. I want to compare it to, let's say, my planting maps. And let's say I go by population, for example. Maybe I have different population rates. In this case, yeah, sure. It actually shows up. I've got two different populations. What's doing well? What's not doing so well? I might have changed up my hybrids. And sure enough, we're going to see different hybrids in that field. So if I really want to get a clear picture of what I'm doing, all these tests, I'm going to again, use that tool again, that little zone tool. Go ahead and circle that out. Bring all that information in and automatically within a couple seconds. Normally, we'll have a generated report. There we go. So here are the different hybrids. Uh, how are they performing on average? How many seeds per acre is performing on average? So I'm getting an extra bushel an acre by planting at roughly 40,000 seeds per acre and the elevations and so on and so forth. You get a lot of great details from this particular platform in very little effort, right? So now we'll go ahead and close that. And the next thing we want to talk about, we'll go back to our main page. Now 
to come up here back to our main page. There we are. So we've gone through the, the, the rainfall. We've gone through the field health and the yield analysis. Notifications essentially every time there's a bit of rainfall or a kind of uh, you know uh, in, uh, health health image. Sorry, so it shows up your account. You'll see a new notification show up here. Activities very briefly is a list of everything that's happening on the field. Whether it's a new harvest map, whether it's a new uh, planting map, whether somebody's dropped a pin or created a region, this is where you're going to see it live, and that's how you'll interact with your agronomists and seed dealers. So that pretty much covers what I wanted to show you here on the uh, uh, the field view app. Um, I'm going to pass it back to Andrew, please. All right. Well, uh, Stan. So um, at this time, we're going to just do a call out um, for questions. Um, and again, in the bottom right hand corner of the side panel, if you've got any questions you'd like to text, uh, please put them in there and uh, we're happy to uh, to look at answering um, now or as we go. Um, next on the agenda uh, will be Lydia. Again, our field product specialist here for Eastern Canada. Uh, Lydia is going to go in the cab app. And uh, again, this is the app that we use when we're connected, when we're streaming data. Um, there's also some uh, very neat analysis tools within it as well. And, um, and it's showing the same information in a lot of cases that Dan's showing, um, but just has some different utility, um, again, for how we're bringing data into the FieldView platform. So um, if there's no questions right now, then um, let me uh, hand it over to Lydia and uh, Lydia, uh, if you could get the ball and uh, then you can uh, share with everybody. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so just as that's getting passed over to me and I can share my screen, um, I'm just going to kind of give an overview about what we're going to chat about during the cab app section. So, um, what I want to focus on for the next half hour is how we can use the cab app, not only to capture. All of the information that we want to capture as we're traveling through our fields this spring. Um, but also, how can we use field view to create trials on our own uh, operations? So, um, whether you want to compare 2 different types of fungicide applications, or if you want to track different hybrids and varieties and chemistries and tank mixes, um, maybe you want to different types of tillage on your operation, um, all different things that you want to look at. Um, we're going to chat about how you can capture those and, and get yourself set up for the most success using FieldView. So I'm just going to share my screen. And hopefully you can all see that now. Um, so I'm going to start at the very beginning. Um, when you have a brand new FieldView account, what do you need to do to self set up for spring? And so the very first thing we need to look at is setting up our equipment. So to do that, it's pretty simple and easy. We start with the equipment tab on the main screen. And you can see here that I've already gone ahead and set up an air seed or a combine and a tractor, but I'm just going to go through setting up a planter and a sprayer just to show you how quick and easy it is, but to kind of show you two different ways of setting things up. So we'll go ahead and get started with a planter. To do it, it's pretty intuitive. We just click add new at the bottom of the screen. And then we select from the list of the type of equipment we can set up. So I'm gonna start with a planter up here. Hit next. I'm just gonna go through the top options of everything. So I'll select a deer, a 1700 model. And then I'm gonna select the frame stuff. Say it's a single, hit next. And then it's going to ask me how many rows my planter is. We'll say this one is 16. And it'll ask for my row spacing. And then lastly, it's going to ask me for my hitch style. So we'll say it's a three point. It's going to ask me to give it a name. If you only have one planter, one sprayer, one combine on your operation, you can just give it a simple name. So say combine. Um, but if you have multiples, you may want to give it a name that helps piece of equipment. So if you have two planters, you might want to call it the new planter and the old planter or whatever way you can you can um, separate them. So I'm just going to give it the name of planter. Hit next. Bring me to this wizard that's just asking me to input some information 
so that it maps correctly. So um, most of these will be pre-populated. On this screen, we do need to select the planting display. So in this case, I'm going to say it's a John Deere 26. And it's also going to ask me for my controller. So again, it's just going to pull up a list. And I'm going to select the correct one. On my left-hand side, you can see there's a darker gray box around planter setup. I'm going to navigate down to GPS offsets. And this is probably the most important part of every piece of equipment to make sure that you have it set up properly. If this isn't set up properly, you can start mapping outside your field. Your, um, your passes may not match up to the headlands. So you just really want to make sure that this is accurate. So in the case of this one, it's asking us what's the distance from the center rear axle of your, your, your tractor tires to the seat exit, and then um, from the same place to your, your wheels of your planter. So it's just helping us better understand uh, uh, exactly where the seat is exiting the planter. Um, these come pre-populated. I would suggest that you still get out a tape measure and measure them. Um, these are kind of our best guess, but they may not be completely accurate. So just make sure that, um, that, that you're checking these. And then application setup, if you have a controller, you're just going to want to indicate what that one is as well. So I'm going to say it's a green star. Okay, so that's really all we need to do to set up a planter when I'm done. You can see it's now been added to the list. Um, the next one I want to set up is a store. and the reason why I want to set up another one is to show you how we can we can still don't have compatible rate controllers. As long as you have a GPS, we are able to variably in your fields for um, say when you speed up and you're planting and all of a sudden there's fewer seeds going in the ground because you're you're traveling faster or vice versa. Um, you, you won't see that variability, but you'll at least be able to see the passes and you'll be able to mark where you make changes. So if you change hybrids or seed treatments or you change the chemistry that you're putting down or the rate that you're putting down, you're able to still map that. Um, you just don't get the granularity that you would um, if, you, if you have a compatible rate controller. So um, with that being said, I'm going to select a self-propelled sprayer. And then again, I'll just pick the ones on the top. So John Deere, 20 series, 4720, and then it's going to ask me for the number of sections. So you just tap plus or minus to select the correct number. And then it's going to ask me for the total width, 60 foot boom. Um, just note that it is in inches. Don't set this up as feet because that'll be a 60 inches. And then it's going to ask me where the boom is located. And again, give it a name. wizard to help me or to help um, figure out where the GP so this is perhaps a little I'll just spend a couple seconds going across the bottom you can see that there are some A. So A is your center front wheel axle out to the GPS. So how far forward or how far behind the center wheel axle is your GPS. So in this case it says 11 inches. Um, B is how high is that GPS off the ground? So this is going to help when we're mapping as you travel through the field. Um, C is how centered is it? So if you're sitting in the cab and it's directly, you can leave that as zero. If it's slightly to the left and is over the wheel well, or it's slightly to the right, we'll need to indicate that as well. And that's what's kind of being shown on the right hand side of the screen. You can see that if I click on, I'm going to send the little blue dot on the image slightly to the left. And if I select right, it'll jump it over to the right. Um, so again, you just need to measure where that is so that we know that we're mapping in the. Zero. And then boom tell is just asking how far is the boom away from that center, that center front wheel axle so that we know how far behind the GPS the spray is actually leaving the unit. So that's just kind of setting that guy up. And then for application setup, I'm going to select a display. So we will say I have, again, under 2630. And if I don't have a compatible rate controller, you can see the second option on is a rate controller. So that's the one that we're going to want to select. If you don't actually have rate controllers, you still want to be able to map in your fields. So 
So I'm just going to select done. I now have a planter, a sprayer, and a tractor in my account. The only other one I want to call out, we won't go through setting it up, but I want to call out um, an air seeder. And the reason I want to call one out of um, required to have the, the cart set up. Um, with the new updates to FieldView, if you've set this up in the past, you had to set it up as a You go set your it's prompt. It'll ask if you have a cart, um, and if you say yes, it'll walk you through setting up the air cart. If you don't, then you just say no, um, and and it leaves it as is. What I want to make sure there's two things that I want to make sure that we call out is that you have the correct count included. So if you only have one tank, you want to make sure that it's down to one. If you have four, you're going to want to. And then the other really, really big one is your air cart position. So if it's tow between, make sure that this toggle on the right hand side is selected to tow between. If it's behind, I want to make sure it's behind because if this isn't set up correctly, your maps are going to be skewed. So that's just a really big one that I want to make sure to call out that folks um, check off their list when they're getting ready for spring this year. thing um, that I want to cover in order to get ready for spring, I'm going to hit my home icon in the upper right hand corner. Um, the next item that I want to, well, after we get our equipment set up is setting up our hybrid. We're going to be using, um, so that we have that done ahead of season. So you're not worrying about it while you're sitting in the cab in the spring. Right hand corner. devices and then hybrids. We're going to click on hybrids and this is going to take, you, take us to what we like to refer to as our virtual seed shed. So if you are inputting hybrids into your account, there's a great big list of every hybrid that's available and it's quite overwhelming. So what the purpose of this virtual seed shed is, is for you to just put in the hybrids and varieties that you have on your farm this year so that when you're sorting through things, you only have a list of say um, anywhere from whatever hybrids on your farm. So to do it, it's really quick and easy. We just click add new hybrid and we start typing out the hybrid that we have. So let's say I have DKC uh, 5078. You can see it's popping up on my list. I can continue to type it out or I can just select the list and it's going to drop it into my seed shed. So it's pretty easy to do. Um, we also have, if I click add new hybrid again, if you're not into typing things out and you have your seed on farm already, you can just scan your bag tags. So if you look in the upper right hand corner, there's a little button that says scan bag tag. And if you click on that, it, I don't actually have a bag tag and it's really hard to find pictures of them on Google, but I did find one. So basically I just printed this one out. Oops, go back in. You can see that it's starting to give us some suggestions. And I'm going to click the second one down, which is 5284 Refuge in a Bag. And it's added it into my account as well. So adding hybrids, both are pretty quick and easy. I highly recommend that you do this just to make things a little easier on yourself um, when you're actually in the cab. You can also add seed treatments. So top of my, you can see that I'm on hybrids currently. But if I click on seed treatments, it's just going to bump me over to that one and it works the exact same way. So you just click add new treatment. You pull up a list of all the ones that are in here and you just pick from the list the one that you have. So it's pretty quick and easy to do. So that's kind of on the seed side of things. I also want to talk about how to do it for any of the crop protection products that you'll be using this year. And so immediately under hybrids on the left hand side is applications. I'm going to click on that one and you can see that I have three put in here already, but we're just going to add a new one just to show everybody how to go through it. This name, I really want to call out that this should be uh, not the name of the product, perhaps, but what you're going to refer to it as. So if you are using, let's say, Stratego Pro for both your wheat and your soybeans, but for soybeans, it's going down on its own. And for wheat, you're going to create a tank mix with a herbicide. I would want to make one that has 
Stratego Pro soybeans, and then another that says Stratego Pro wheat, so that we have those separated out because you can create the tank mix ahead of time. So I'm just going to do Stratego Pro uh, soy. And then it's going to ask me, is the product granular or liquid? So I'm going to say liquid and hit finish. And it's going to pull up this, uh, this screen and it's going to ask us to enter some information. So you can see on the right that it says by rate and by amount. I'm just going to toggle back and forth so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and beside that, there's a little question mark. So depending on how you like to think of things, there's two different ways of putting this information in. So by rate, means is I'm going to enter in this gallon breaker um, spot I'm going to say it's going down at 10 gallons breaker and then when I add a product I'm going to actually put in the amount that's going down so let me just type in Stratego go pro in the list. and so it says Stratego pro zero gallons per acre I'm going to change gallons to liters or whatever unit you're used to working in I assume it's going to be liters and I'm going to type in that it's going down at 0 0.23 liters per acre. So that's all I need to do if I'm going to do it by. If you like to think about total volume amounts, I would toggle over to by amount. And let's say I have a thousand liter tank. That total number is going to show up in this total mix amount that currently says 0, 0. So if I have a thousand liter tank, I'm going to want I think 23 liters of pro. And then I'm going to need to add the remaining 993.033, or 33, whatever, um, liters of water to make this total mix amount 1,000 gallons if I have a 1,000 gallon tank. I'm not sure if that's totally clear, um, but that's essentially the difference between the two. By rate is by the actual um rate that you would find on a label and by amount is the total amounts you're dumping in the tank including your carriers so um we'll just go by rate we'll say this is 0 0.23 and then when we hit done it just adds that to our list so if you were doing this for um stratego pro soy or sorry stratego pro wheat the Stratego Pro, you would go in and add your herbicide. So say you're adding Bechtrolam or whatnot, you would add that as a second product and it would create a tank mix like our very top one that says Roundup has two products. So that's how we set up hybrids and applications. The next thing that we recommend you do is you assign them to fields. And the reason that we um, recommend assigning these to fields is it just makes things a little bit more simple when you're sitting in the cab because this is going to help pre-populate the pop-ups that you see. So if I select fields, which is in the upper right-hand corner, I have a list of all the fields that are in my account. And let's say this demo field health field, I want to assign some hybrids to. So I just click add hybrid, and you can see that it's only pulling up the two hybrids that I had already put into my account. So let's say I wanna put 5078 on this field, and that 5078 is treated with the Acceleron plus quick roots. And maybe later in the season, I don't have a corn, but let's add some Roundup. I'm going to apply a Roundup application to this field. And so when we get a little further into the CAB app, I'll show you the reason why you would have wanted to do this. Um, but um, just know that this is where you would come to assign things. So I'm going to go back to my home screen and we're going to jump into um, actually seeing what things on the map screen. So I'm going to click map up in the upper uh, left hand corner. And this is our gen generic map screen. So I'm just going to go to a field. Let's go back to that demo field health field. Oops. Oh, this guy. Um, in this, so now that I'm in this field, um, and we click the drop down, there are a bunch of different things that we can we can um, that we can or, sorry navigate through. But the one that I want to call out on the left hand side, you can see there's a box titled PIDs and Regions, and in there there is an option called Map Options, and so this is where 
um, can change certain things that occur while traveling through the field. Things we get questions on is I have two fields that are really close to one another. And when I'm doing a headland pass or anything that's very close to the boundary of those two fields, I automatically get bumped into the other field or I keep getting a whole bunch of pop ups um, and I just want to go. So that all has to do with boundary protection. And you can see that in the top of this, um, this screen, there's field boundaries, regions, but the you can see there's three options. There's prompt, auto, disabled. So if I have this on, turned on to prompt, which I do now because it's highlighted in white, what this will do is if it believes I'm moving into an adjacent field, I will get a pop-up on my screen that says, um, the west field. Is this correct? If I'm not, I would select no. If I was, I would select yes. If I toggle this over to auto and the same thing happens where I the, the tool thinks I'm in the field adjacent, it will not give me that pop-up. It'll just automatically start mapping the data in the adjacent field. If you have very, very clean boundaries and you have good spacing between those two, um, this is a auto is a totally fine option for you. Um, but if you're often getting those pop ups and you really shouldn't be, you're going to want to make sure that you probably have this on prompt. Um, and if we have it disabled, that means that you have to physically tell it that you're moving to a new field. So if I, um, if I leave the field that I'm currently planting and I drive down the road to a neighboring field and I pull in. Unless I tell it that I have changed fields, it will assume that I am still in the first field that I was planting. So there's three very different ways to work depending on. Um, just the, the different, um, how they function differently. When you click on them, it will give you, um, it'll tell you what essentially what I just talked about. Um, so you can make that decision for yourself, but just know that those are there and you get to them by coming to the map screen and selecting map options in the upper left hand corner. Okay, so next I'm going to move on to um, actually collecting data in the field. So for those of you that have been on field view before, or for those of you that are, are that are brand new, um, we do have our climate field view drive. Some people refer, refer to it as the puck. Um, but the climate field view drive is that little device that plugs into your equipment. And so if you have not used it before, um, it's a little device that plugs into the CAN port of your equipment. And the CAN port can be a little tricky to find. Um, it can be in a whole host of places in your cab. Um, it could be in the armrest. It could be in the, the bar that's behind your seat. It could be in the ceiling. It could be below your key. Um, if you're having a really hard time finding it, my best suggestion is just to call up your equipment dealer and ask them where your cam port is. Um, they can, like I said, they can be anywhere in your cab. But um, essentially, if you're you're kind of set up, you can just you drive into that cam port, and you have to pair it um, to your cab app. So similar to the way you would pair your phone to your vehicle, you pair it to the cab app. So to do that. I always recommend going to your actual iPad settings to start. So I'm just going to click out of the cab app and settings icon. And the first thing I want to do is go down to Bluetooth on the left hand side. And I want to make sure it's on and we can see that the green button in the upper right hand corner indicates that it is. And if you've never connected a field view drive before where my um, uh, towards the bottom or the middle of my screen, it says other devices, and you can see that it's working um, right in there. If you've never connected before, you'll see a big, long serial number pop up and it'll be full of numbers and letters. And that'll be your field view drive. If you look at the bottom of your drive, that matching number will be on there as well. So if you've never connected before, you would just select that device from the list. But as you can see, I've already connected to my drives and I have three of them listed out here. So once you've paired the Bluetooth, we're going to go back to the FieldView cab app. And we're going to go home, settings in the bottom left hand corner, and devices. So we can see that Lydia's Harvest demo 
has tap to connect beside it, it means that we've already had that guy connected. So we're going to click on that and it's just going to take a second and it's going to find my field view drive. And now we can see that it is currently connected. So really that's all we need to do. We're good to go start planting at this point. So I'm going to go into the actual field screen so that we can see what that experience is like. So I'm gonna go back to the home screen and then I'm going to select map in the upper uh, left hand corner. And you can see it looks a little different now. Now there's a few metrics that are showing up on the, um, on the, the left hand side. Sorry, for that, it is connected to a planter. We can see that in the upper right hand corner. There's a little uh, planter. Out. But if it's not connected to the correct equipment, just go to the equipment tab and select what you want to select it to, or what you want to pair it to. So I'm going to actually pair it to my planter instead of my air seeder. So it's now flipped over to that select tab. So on your main screen, there are um, there are a few different items down the left hand side. So you can see it pre-populates with hybrid population application so that would be if you're putting down um, Stratego Pro or any other crop protection products the rate that the application is going down the total field acres you've applied it to so far and then the number of acres you're covering per hour at the very bottom there's an edit option if you click on that it's going to pull up all the other parameters that you could look at instead so feel free to customize um, the list down the left hand side to whatever you would like to see and so I am just going to go through quickly what it looks like when you pull into a field and you start planting. So because I'm sitting in my office, I'm obviously not pulling into a field. So I'm just going to select a field from the list. But what you would experience is as you pull through a field boundary, the GPS location is going to recognize it. This prompt. So I'm going to select um, not that one. I'm just going to select a field. As I pull into this demo prescriptions field, I'm going to get this prompt that you can see on my screen. It says change active field. Do you wish to make this field active? So by saying yes, I'm saying this is the field that I am planting in. And the next pop up I'm going to get because I'm running a planter is what hybrids are you putting in this field? So but if you're planting something different, you would select that from the list. And I'm going to tap to select in the planter. So we can see that those hybrids that I have pre-populated, um, I can drop in to here. Back in the fields tab, um, I had assigned hybrids to fields. If I had assigned a hybrid to this demo prescriptions field, this form would already be filled out for me and I could just go ahead and select confirm. If I wanna to toggle over to seed treatments, I can assign a seed treatment to this field. And then once I'm good with that, I hit confirm. I'm not doing any kind of application, so I'm just gonna hit X. And then I would start planting. I'm, I'm ready to start planting this field. And um, it's kind of as simple as that. The metrics will begin collecting down the left-hand side of the screen. Obviously I'm not in an actual uh, tractor with a planter right now, but if I was, this data would start collecting and we would begin to see those maps paint. What I want to talk about quickly um, before we move on is if we want to run different trials, how do we go about doing that? So let's say I want to do a trial that's as simple as putting one hybrid on one side of the field and a separate hybrid on another side of the field. So I'm currently using uh, DeKalb 5078. If I want to plant the other side of my field with, I believe it was 5284 that was in my account, I just select that hybrid box that's in the upper left-hand corner of my screen it's going to bring me back to the pop-up that happened when I started this field. So if I want to change out 5078 for the hybrid, I just click the X at the end of the line and then tap to select hybrids. So 5284 instead. It also has Acceleron, Acceleron on it. I'll hit confirm. And we can now see in the top corner that I have DeKalb 5284 in my planter instead. So I can go and plant that out and we'll be able to see on our maps that there's two different hybrids within that. If you're interested in doing split planter type trials, so you have um, 5284 on one side, 
planter and um, 5078 on the other side. I'm just going to go select that hybrid tab again. And instead of deleting the 5284, I'm going to select an additional hybrid. 5078. And because I've added a second hybrid, it's going to say, where do you want that second hybrid located? So we remember that I created a 16 row planter. And I can say, I want the 5078 on the left half, and it's going to populate those for me. I can say, I want it on the right half, it'll populate those for me. Or I can just begin clicking on individual boxes and it'll turn those on for me. So however you like to do it, you just select done. See each lit on each row at the end, right before the S, it lists out what row the hybrids are in. So 5284 is in row nine to eight, and 5078 is in rows nine to 16. So if that looks correct, I'll just hit confirm, and then field, there'll be a hybrid coming out of each side of my planter. So that's how we would split planter. Um, if you want to do something, let's say you want to try, we've had folks in the past try different um, tillage trials. So they would do kind of conventional tillage on one half of the field, and they tried out strip tilling on another half of the field. We don't currently have a really great way of tracking that. Um, in terms of, we can track it, but we don't have a great way of analyzing it other than doing a region on each side of the field. So a way to do that is you can actually create custom hybrid names. So I'm going to take these two off the field and I'm going to select uh, a new hybrid and put add new hybrid at the bottom. I could still say I'm using the Calb 5078, but in selecting something from the list, I'm going to call this the Calb 5078 strip till. And I'm going to tell the system that it's corn. And when I go through the field, I'll have a hybrid that's, indi that's indicating the thing I'm trying to do. So if it's a, obviously in this case, a, a tillage trial, I can, I can adjust the names of the hybrids to match the thing I'm trying to do. So you can do this with all different things, really the sky's the limit, whatever you could think of renaming things, you could map the. The way that you would like it to work. Um, something that I want to cover quickly is when we're doing spray trials. So I'm just going to go back to my equipment and I'm going to toggle over to a spray. Different, let's say fungicides in the field side by side. There is a very specific way that we would like you to do it so that the fungicides show up side by side. Um, if you just change product, I need to go, say we're doing Stratego Pro. And I would say spray half my field with Stratego Pro, but if I wanted to come in and put that next to a competitor, what I would recommend you not do, hit X here and get rid of Stratego Pro. What I recommend is selecting add edit products. And if we're saying Stratego Pro to Corumba or something different, I would remove Stratego Pro from here and then add a new product. So let's say this Karumba, I would add Karumba. But we'll say it's the same and I'll hit done and then confirm. So what this will do, it's hard to explain, it will Fungicide side by side on the map. If I did it the other way and I just got application, it'll actually create two separate maps. So it's still usable, but it's a little harder to make sense of the things that you're looking at when we do it that way. So those are kind of the main things that I wanted to cover off. If you ever have issues with your cab app, come in here and send in a ticket to our support line. If you fill this out and send it in, and then you go call them anyway, nobody. If you do it this way, it'll actually send them the field files that you're working on. So you can see across the bottom of the files from demo prescription will be attached. So this is the last field that I was working in. If I'm having an issue, it's going to send them those files 
so that they can actually start working on them um, before you kind of call in. So just know that that is there um, to help you get going. So now that you've got everything mapped in your fields and you've been able to put different trials in, um, we kind of get to the, the so what. So what do we do with that information? And that's what Dan, I believe, is going to cover off um, in the next section. I think, Andrew, we're going to take five minutes just so people can and run and grab a cup of coffee or whatever they need to before we run into the the final parts of the presentation. So I'll hand it back to to those guys to to carry on. Well, thank you, uh, Lydia. Um, wonderful job and. Uh... I think really helpful as we approach the uh, upcoming planting season here. Um, if the host could just pass the ball back over to uh, to myself, uh, I just have two more slides I'm going to uh, share. <clears throat> or Lydia, perhaps, yeah, there it is. Uh, so Lydia mentioned um, about mapping with an incompatible rate controller. If you happen to have equipment that you would like to start mapping with, um, but don't want the full investment of an auto guidance system uh, to get a GPS, there are map anything kits available and uh, they can uh, really simulate uh, just what Lydia went through in terms of whether it's a hybrid uh, fertilizer application, um, even things like manure, or, or crop protection, we can certainly map those uh, by a manual input and then tracking that through. And, and it comes, you know, probably close to about $1,000 through Ag Express. Um, you know, it depends on the US dollar exchange rate and whatnot, but um, a worthwhile investment if you're starting to track all of your passes. Um, so just wanna make you aware of that. So we are gonna take a break for five minutes. So on my watch, it's about 11.30. So we'll come back here at about 11.35. If you need a bio break, need a refill of that coffee, uh, now's a great time. Uh, this is where I would play elevator music if I have it, but I, I don't. So I'm just gonna uh, leave it blank for the time being and I'll be on mute for the next five minutes. Thanks.
Hey. Well, it's about uh, 1135 and we're going to uh, do our best to try and uh, wrap this up within the time allocated. So I uh, want to just uh, get going here. A uh, number of things just on this page to just highlight around. Sometimes we get questions about what type of iPad do we need? Um, what works? It's always our recommendation that they do be cellular equipped as, as we tend to see users grow into field view and want to start um, using remote view as an example and so uh, may buy a cell plan down the road uh, but Wi-Fi only does work as we do use a Bluetooth connection between the drive and the iPad uh, but we do need an iOS 13 or greater and uh, generally recommend 128 gigabyte or more for best performance. A recent cab app version did just come out 9.0.0 uh, so please do make sure that you're up to date on those versions and uh, support uh, is available. Uh, very eager to make sure that we want to make our users confident and that this is uh, working well. So please uh, feel free to use those resources as well. So as we jump into 201, uh, Dan we're, is going to uh, take us through some cab app reports, get into some analysis as well as remote view. Then we'll transition into seed scripts and uh, Bob Thurwell will join us and uh, really go through uh, the science behind scripting and we'll go through a quick demo of that. So. Uh, Hope you're uh, ready for this, and uh, I will uh, hand this over to Dan. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen in a second here. So the second part of this presentation is essentially once you do have your information into the the system, what do you do with it, right? What's what's the next step? Uh, so what? So let me just go ahead and share my screen again. And now we're going to be back into the cab app. So just as a note, the cab app is an iPad only uh, version of the, the application. So it needs to, you need to have an iPad for this type of information. But this is how you're going to extract your, your information. How do you make those decisions next year? What do you do with this, right? We're going to go ahead and click on that cab app icon. And what I'm going to show you first is how to do a map or field by field mapping and uh, reporting. So let's go reports by, by individual fields. I'm going to go ahead and click on the map section of my cab app here. And again, we'll go to that north field. Let me just correct that agenda this side again, this uh, highlight. Let's go edit. And if I would say, let's go down to say seven steps, auto adjust, and done. So now let's say I just got out of this field with the, the combine, the planter, the sprayer, whatever machine. I just came out of that field. And I want to report this, right? I just want to send some kind of report out. There's a couple of ways of doing this. Up here, we go to the more button. The one with the little arrow coming out, that's the more button. And we get more features. So here I can select either season summary, harvest summary, and send print, and so on and so forth. The difference is here, if I go to season, or sorry, harvest summary, I just get that one layer. So summary of that one particular layer. I've got all my information here, how many total acres, average moisture, average yield, and so on. I get all my different hybrids as well as the seed treatments, the combines, I can add notes, and on and on. From here, I can go ahead and create a PDF. So with all this information, basically put everything together. If you're the type of person who likes to have information in a binder, have physical copies of it, here's a great way to do it. If you're working with your insurance company, here's another way to do it. You can grab your field, have all this information, all these pretty little colors, but with information, right? The colors mean, don't, don't mean a whole lot until you have some data behind it. So here again, I have all my different hybrids, how they've performed, total numbers, so on and so forth for every one of these fields. Again, this is just a harvest layer. If I want to get a little more detail, again, we'll go click on that more button. And now you're going to see the season summary. So the season summary tells me everything I've done on that particular field. In this case, I came in with a burn down, I planted my soybeans, came back with a fungicide, and then harvested soybeans. Really simple. What's excellent with this feature is that, especially on our, our potato growers, where we you know spray fungicides uh, you know every seven to ten days, we have a list of information here. We can actually start getting all this information. We'd have a list of all the applications, all the fungicides by date, by application, and so on and so forth. And we can still dig in. Uh, a lot of producers are looking at the Canada Gap uh, form our reports, and you can get this information directly from here. You can go into let's say this again, this layer here. I would have all my information. I can have my product application, uh, my pro line. I would have the registration number, which now from now on will be pulled up automatically. This is an old version of what I did here. I could have my custom sprayer. If I decided to, I can add an operator. Or I could have my operator's name and their license number and have a list of those people. Cancel, sorry. And have a list of those people uh, and how many acres they've done each. 
as well as the weather feature. So in this case, again, because this is an older map, I could manually do it by clicking onto one of these buttons here. I can say, hey, this is where the temperature, this is where the wind speed, this is when the wind direction. But from now on for this season, if you have internet or data in the tractor hooked up to the iPad, this will be done automatically. As soon as you open up the, you open up the pump on the sprayer, that first layer will be automatically uh, populated on the low weather, wind speed and wind direction. And when you're completed that field, again, the section here will be automatically completed. You can still put in your notes and still create your PDF version of the maps. So these are great, uh, great information to have. I had a, uh, I was doing a, a tour in Quebec there uh, last fall. We had some producers running around in the fields with their sprayers and we had the Ministry of Agriculture kind of stop the, uh, the, the farmers there with their, their sprayers and they were asking about pesticide use and what they were doing. So that producer was lucky enough to have FieldView in the cab, clicked on their in-season and say, hey, listen, we got a fungicide here, showed them the application rate, and in this case, it's a uniform application rate, but was able to quell the information and give all the information needed on the spot uh, for that Ministry of, Ag of Agriculture, and they just left them alone. So it was a great, great, great tool to have uh, right in the cab. So this is basically a way to get your information layer by layer. What if you're a custom applicator? and you wanna send that information directly to one of your customers. So instead of uh, just printing out that, that map, let's go ahead and harvest again. So let's say I've got my combine, just finished working that field, and now I wanna send those files over to my customers. So I can either, like I said earlier, get the PDF version, or from that more button once again, I could send or print the information. Now printing a PDF on this version here, you don't get all the extra information. You basically get the colored map and that's it. So I'd, I'd prefer to go to the other uh, harvest summary before planting that. But in the send field files, this does, it actually sends the DAT file. So they, basically the information, the raw information is sent over to either uh, by field files or to send an account. The difference is if your customer does not have a field view account, but has another platform, you can send these field files and they will be compatible with a variety of other different types of platforms. Whereas if your customer already has the field view account, you can send directly to their account and have it populated on there. Therefore, you can de delete the information off your iPad and not take up that storage. So again, this is a field by field type of reporting. This is really great tools. Another way you can send out those reports, let's go back to that homepage, is to do a full farm report. Let's say I wanna send all my files together, kind of send the entire uh, year at, uh, at one time. I can go right ahead and click on my settings here. And you'll notice on the side, it'll say data. We wanna work with our data. So in the data tab, at the very top in the center, we'll see the send data field data. So same as we had the earlier button, but this is for the entire operation. So we click on the send field data. Let's say I selected my 2019 season. Here I can select either multiple fields or all my fields. Since I select all my fields, I'll select the recipient. And in this case, again, I have the same choices with send field files, send to account and sharing files or sharing, uh, sharing key, sorry. So send, to, send field files again is a raw data file. So that can be shipped into other platforms. Send to account once again, if that client has their activated field view account, you can send all that information in one shot. But the sharing key is if you have a platform that is a partner to FieldView uh, and you want to bring in that data and share it on live matters, on live basis, this is another way of doing it. So I can send these files directly to, say, an Agrian type platform or a partner type platform, and all information will be shared directly based on that producer. But then again, you see, this is where the farmer has access to their data. They're the ones in control of their own data. Now, if we want to dig into this analysis, we really want to dig into a little details as to what's going on in my farm, I can go into this analysis tab. This is a really great tool to really find out what's happening on the farm. For example, I had a producer asking, say, listen, I purchased X number of liters of ProLine last year. I think I've been overcharged. Uh, how can I prove uh, this is what I've used on my farm? Well, quite simply, if you go to applications and we have applications, we have planting, yield, and weather. So in this case, we want to go to our application data for 2019. We go look at our products. Here's a total of our products used this year. So as long as everything has been mapped, right? Everything that the drive was in the, in the sprayer, we've got all those liters set up. We know that we've used 100.5 liters of ProLine this year. Will this confirm or deny what you, what you thought? And you could prove to your dealers, hey, listen, I've used 100 liters. You charged me for 110. Here's the difference. So this is a great way you can start looking at your data in, in um, kind of out, you know, all the reports. Another way to look at this 
is let's say I want to look at my yield. Right? So I'm looking at my yield, let's say for 20, 2019 soybeans, and I want to see, say, by seed treatment. What seed treatment worked best for my farm? Again, I can decide, hey, I like this treatment, works really great for my area. No seed treatment was okay, but it was better than this particular treatment here in the bottom. And if you're looking at, uh, looking at unicorn dust, did it actually work on my farm today? You can prove it. As long as everything is mapped, it's a great way to pull out the information. Now, what do we do with this information? Again, it's about making better decisions for the next year. If you look on the top right-hand corner, we have that share button. There's a couple things we can do with this information. Again, we can create that PDF. If you're the type of person again, who likes to have these physical reports in hand, you can print these out or email them out. Another way of looking at this information is to create a CSV file, which is a comma separated value file, which can be entered into whether you're you know, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets or any other product out there that is compatible with a CSV format. You can bring that into your own uh, internal systems. So it's a great way to get your information all set up. The last thing I wanna show you quick here is in the equipment side. So if we click on equipment, we have what we call this remote view, this little guy with the spyglass. The remote view allows me to basically look at other farmers' equipment if they allow me to do so. So for example, Andrew here happens to have his combine out in the field and I wanna see the screen. I might wanna see what the moisture is on that field so I can adjust the, 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 the grain heater here, or the, the dryer, you know, temp, maybe the speed or the heat. Uh, once I click on search, if Andrew was active in the field, his equipment would show up here. It would say Andrew's combine. I would click on say, please view. However, Andrew would have a notification saying, do you allow Dan to look at your field or to look at your, um, look at your field view? If he selects yes, uh, what I would see is basically everything he sees in his own platform. In other words, this is the type of information I would see from Andrew. So we can see the combine following along in the field. I can see all the data here on the right hand or the left hand side and follow along if need be and do the analysis. A great feature for this is I have a producer up in the Maritimes. Um, they were troubleshooting the precision planting equipment and based on remote view, they were able to troubleshoot the equipment at a long distance and not have to have actually visit the farm uh, on its own. So we were able to do a lot of different cool work with uh, the remote view. Um, this is where I'm gonna cut off and hand it right back to Andrew, please. Okay, Dan, if you could just um, hand me the ball and uh, I will uh, share the seed script side of uh, this presentation. <clears throat> so um, this is a, a neat opportunity now to um, look at how we can now optimize our inputs. So we've, to this point, found how we can capture that data uh, how we can use things like field health imagery, how can can generate reports, but now how do we optimize some of those inputs? And uh, we're uh, lucky enough here today to have Bob Thurwell, who's a market development agronomist uh, with DeKalb and, um, and Bear, and he's been in the industry for 25 years. Uh, he covers uh, the deep part of the southwestern part of Ontario, uh, responsible for uh, technical support of DeKalb corn, soys, and bear crop protection, and does a lot of plot management, working with growers and uh, dealers, looking at really what's next uh, with the whole bear portfolio from a seed and crop protection uh, side of things. So, uh, Bob, if you could um, come up now and, uh, and let people know you're here, and uh, we'll uh, move the slides here for you. Okay, Andrew, thank you for the opportunity to come on here and uh, a pleasure to be here and give you a bit of insight of some of the things our market development team has been doing over the years to contribute to uh, data that goes into the seed scripts part of FieldView. So you can move to the next slide there. And uh, I want to start off with a quote from Fred Bilo. Many of you may know Fred Bilo. He's been up to Southwest Egg Conference in Bridgetown before. But one of his quotes was higher plant populations are one of the most important ways to achieve the highest possible corn yields. And uh, so Fred's done lots of work on plant populations and other things. You may have remembered uh, one of his works was the seven wonders of higher corn yields and population one was one of those important parts. So go ahead, Andrew. Next slide, please. Yep. There we go. So a couple of a few backgrounds, um, things to think about for higher populations in corn. 
And we know that, um, you know, basically uh, to increase plant density, that does help us to achieve higher yield gains. And some of those things that contribute to these are the new traits that we've brought into the corn market over the years, whether it's VT Double Pro or SmartStack, some of those technologies. And our breeders certainly continue to look for yield increases in the germplasm that we bring to market. We also know that germplasm responds differently to different populations. And we also need good agronomy, uh, good agronomic traits within our germplasm to support those higher populations. And really our goal is to get more consistent kernel counts per ear and, and have the uh, agronomic traits that will give us good stock quality late in the season to support those, those larger years and still give us good harvest, uh, harvestability of those, those hybrids. So it's easy to buzz down the row with the combines. Our yield environments have also shown uh, greater yield responses to higher populations when we compare, compare that to lower yield environment zones. So basically what I'm trying to say here is, um, you know, higher yield zones in your field do respond more to increasing populations than if we were to look at a low yield zone part of your field. Next slide, please. So what I want to talk to about to, uh, about today is just uh, the multiple years of population trials that our market development team has done. We've done these locally in Ontario and Quebec at our research farms, and uh, we've tested over a thousand commercial decalb hybrids in over five thousand replicate replicated trials. And uh, I want to show you a couple of examples of some of the data that we've uh, that we've put together and to show how different hybrids respond to different populations. And again, really our goal is to produce higher yields with good standability. So, so yield and standability along with the corn price and the, and the cost of the seed are all taken into account. And so this slide here is really a accumulation of all of these trials over the, the, these nine years from 2011 to 2019. These are all trials from Ontario and Quebec. And you can see uh, every one of those dots is an individual uh, replicated trial or uh, um, a thousand hybrids and 5,000 replicated trials. And you can see the, the typical trend is that with higher populations, we find higher yields. You'll also notice on the bottom of the bar there, there's an orange bar that goes across and that is the total of stock and root lodging percentage. And so we certainly take that into consideration too. We, uh, we are certainly, we recognize that as growers, nobody wants to, uh, to try to pick up hybrids, you know, at, at 40,000 population that have a 20% stock breakage at harvest. That's just not acceptable. And so we certainly take that stock breakage and, and root lodging into account. Next slide, please. Our, our trick is really to figure out which hybrids do respond to high, higher populations, give you guys the best recommendations for your farms, and then incorporate that data into the seed scripting tool um, as part of Climate Field View. So a couple of hybrids here, uh, one that you may be familiar with, 4856, probably our highest volume product in Ontario and Quebec um, for decalb, but this shows a very straight line response to population. And you can see uh, that red line that goes across there. Hopefully you can see the most sliding across. It's certainly a straight line. So it tells us that 4856 will respond to population. Um, you know, it's a direct response when we increase that, that population. You'll see the orange line on the bottom of the graph, which is the damaged plants. So stock and root lodging is very low. So again, uh, you know, indicates good agronomics within that 4856, has good late season stocks. And uh, as long as we keep that stock breakage below 10%, we feel that's a, a reasonable recommendation. And so you'll see on the little table below 4856 there, you'll see the yield optimum is 49,300 population. And that's basically the highest, the high watermark uh, for yield on the table above. But the most important part is what's the best economic 
rate of, of return for you guys as farmers. And when we look at the economic rate, we take into account the cost of your seed, the cash price for corn, and as well, uh, the standability or the stock, the, the damage plants at the bottom. And so the best economic rate, uh, the population of for 4856 is 42,000. And so um, again, that takes in the economics and those are the kind of the numbers that get built into the seed scripts. If you look at the hybrid on the right, 3855, um, a little flatter curve, so not as great a response to population, but still slight increases there as we go. And then you see the bottom bar, um, which is the damaged plants. And so you see, once you get into that 37 or 40,000 plants, the stock breakage does become a consideration, and that would also be factored into our recommendations. So you can see the, the table below there, the highest yield or the yield optimum is 39,900 uh, population. But the, the economic recommendation would be 35, 3, 300. And so again, that's taking into consideration some of those details as we look. As we look at those. So um, so this table shows some of the, the zones and the yield adjustments that you can make when you are in the uh, seed script building and builder area on your laptop. And I think Andrew's going to go through this as well. And uh, just a couple of things I wanted to make mention of here. You can see the target yield on the left is 205 bushel. You can plunk in your own seed cost. And here we have 300 for a bag of seed. The grain price is $5. And you can adjust that if you've got a much forward contracted or you are optimistic on, uh, on the markets, you can change that or lower that. And then um, the number of zones as well. And one of the cool things on this is you uh, can create your seed script using your your historic yield maps from field view and it'll come up with three zones you can see the populations there 31 9 33 3 and 35 and you say gosh it seems a little low i think i want to push my populations a little bit and shoot for maybe a little higher yield you can simply take that slider bar on the top right hand corner with the green arrow there and you can see lower investment or higher estimated yields and you can slide that Let's say to the right, you're going to shoot for a little better, little bigger yields, a little higher investment, and then we'll toggle those population recommendations accordingly in tandem for all hybrids that are, or all zones that are in there. So that's kind of a, a neat way to, to adjust those higher or lower as you feel comfortable with. And just to finish up here, uh, this is just a quick look at one of the seed scripts that I did for a customer in 2018. This is more complex than uh, you folks will be using because this is a research planter that we had that was equipped with some precision planting equipment. And we actually had two, two hybrids in each, uh, each seed box. But basically this shows um, where I took two years of historical corn yield data from a grower. And on the left-hand side there, you can see the different populations, the zones that were uh, that were given. We also put in some static, um, some static spots in there as well, static runs with the different hybrids, but basically from 30 to 38,000. And on the right-hand side, you can see all the different colors with uh, which indicates the, the multi-hybrids that we did. And uh, just wanted to say that you know even a very complex seed script like this, I was able to do in less than 10 minutes. And uh, I'm sure when you're doing just, you know, single hybrid and you have three or four or five zones in your field, certainly less than, than five minutes per field is certainly very easily attainable. So, um, okay. I think that was my last slide there, Andrew. So just wanted to, just to finish up, you know, just to reiterate that uh, the, the power of the, the seed scripts that we have in Climate Field View is, is certainly fueled by all the local market development trials that are done in Ontario and Quebec on a hybrid by hybrid basis. And I think that's one of the real benefits that uh, the seed scripting offers to you. Well, thank you very much, Bob. Uh, I think that really helps bring some of the science story behind it all and uh, and really helpful for those on the line here who are uh, possibly contemplating uh, doing scripting for the 2020 season. So thank you. So uh, we're going to go into a, uh, a demo here as we uh, get towards the uh, the end of our uh, presentation. Um, so 
The one thing I, uh, I just want to draw your attention to is if we're going to create scripts, uh, we go into our fields, uh, we select the field uh, that we've got some data on that we want to script. And um, just so you're aware, we need three years of field health imagery and including one year uh, with corn in order to do a uh, prescription. Um, or we need two years of yield data uh, with one of them being corn um, to, to do that as well. So either or, and in a lot of cases, we're doing both, obviously, given that you've got historical information already provided you. So I've just clicked prescriptions and, um, and now our prescriptions tool is loading. Um, I've already been able to select my field, but if for some reason I need to select a different field, I can do that here. I am making it for 2020. Uh, if I had existing prescriptions, they would be residing here. And I'm going to go and uh, go here and create a new prescription for this field. I'm going to make a planting prescription. I can make a manual fertility or soybean uh, prescription as well um, with the advanced planting prescription, prescription otherwise known as field view seed scripts. Uh, this is where we're really using our data science to integrate with your data science and uh, really automate that script and so that's the one we're going to create here so i see my various data layers uh, that i've put into one place into climate field view and um, if for some reason i wanted to keep some data out uh, perhaps i recently tiled the field and now the field health imagery starts to look different in that field uh, perhaps i want to remove that and so let's just say for instance I wanted to remove um, two layers here from uh, 2016 as an example. Uh, it looks like the field health data for my soybeans in 2019 wasn't yet assigned. Um, I do see I've got some corn data both from field health and yield. And uh, I've got a good, good combination of three years of data that I'm going to create my script on here. So I'm next, um, we're going to have an early planting season this year. And so uh, I've got April 30th in there, but that, that date doesn't uh, hinge on a lot here. Uh, I'm also going to uh, select my hybrid um, and whether it's a DeKalb hybrid or whether it's another hybrid, uh, there's a good chance that it will pop up after you just uh, type in a few letters for it. So um, I see 4909. Um, I also see that there are others here that say tested and this is where we have enough data uh, from the market development team, which Bob serves on, uh, that has been integrated in here. Um, and really has put in some proof of science behind this seed script. If, if it's not, uh, we use typically more of a maturity level that we've got data for. We clump in uh, groups of hybrids on and are able to optimize those populations still as well. So you can do it either way. It, it doesn't require to be tested to be a good script. Um, we just have a little bit more science behind those that are tested. Seed cost per bag. In this case, I'll put $300 and I'll put uh, five dollars uh, for my grain price and I'm going to click next so it's building my management zones now um, so now essentially I've created it was really that easy um, but now what we might want to do is we might want to tweak some of it um, so I can see here it looks like I have a really small zone it's just telling me this zone is, is really small it's less than one acre uh, perhaps we want to make five zones and uh, we want to just uh, take a look at see what it might look like so now, now we see a lot more detailed information here. Um, we can also identify that uh, we've got this bar here that we can look at a lower investment. If we wanted to do uh, some lower populations, we would see that I, I range currently from 32,000 to 34.4 or 30, no, 35.9 rather. And uh, we'll see that these will uh, quickly update and I've seen now from 30.9 uh, to 34.9, basically my highs and lows. Um, if I want to go uh, and back to where I go normally into the middle here between lower investment and higher yield, I can do that. And then I'm able to also uh, view the various prescription templates that we were just kind of going through here. So let's finish this in editor. This is basically a drawing tool. Um, we're able to merge uh, some particular zones here. So if I wanted to select a couple of zones to merge, maybe this one over here, I want to merge with uh, this one and this one and go save. Um, we can see that that will uh, consolidate some of those zones. If I want to draw a new zone and I want to uh, make that a polygon 
and uh, and just go around the edge here. And maybe this is a, a lower yielding area I'm familiar with um, that as well and go save. Um, but I can also make some check blocks. Um, it's always important to validate um, any changes we're making. And, and so let's just say that I wanted to um, make a, a small square of a check block within my high yield zone here. Um, I can do that and um, I'll go save and that now is highlighted over here. So if I wanted to do, um, maybe I was a more of a traditional 33,000 uh, plant per acre uh, user, I would end up having a uh, block in the middle here at 33,000 and I could then validate that. I also see I've got a couple other zones, um, which I can highlight again on the left to know which one correlates with the zone I've clicked. So again, maybe I'm targeting 200 bushels in this section and I wanna do 32,000, I can do that. And then I look over at this section, which was probably a lower yielding area if we looked at that original prescription. And so maybe it's 220 that I'm targeting there. And maybe I wanna do uh, 35,000. And now I've got that there. Now, what might be interesting is how do we validate this? Do we have a yield map maybe from our last corn crop and we can put that underneath and have a look? And we can see that these boundaries here are in and around on this particular zone, um, the higher yielding areas. Uh, we can see this up here. Uh, maybe we wanna tighten this one up and, uh, and we can go ahead and do that. Uh, if we wanted to go ahead and click that and maybe we wanted to, um, to go ahead and, and merge that one with another zone and then go ahead and, and redraw as an example. Um, so we can, we can do that as well. So, um, so lots of different opportunities, but if we're satisfied now with this prescription, um, we can go save and it'll save us. And now we can export it and we can export in a variety of different formats. So we could connect it to my John Deere, where if there was a modem, on the tractor, we can then uh, send it to our My John Deere account and pick it up there. Uh, if we're a precision planting customer, um, this will sync to the iPad and the iPad can then feed it directly into uh, the precision planting uh, Gen 2 or Gen 3 uh, display. But maybe we want to download it and select the type of file we want. And you can see we have Ag Leader, we have generic shape file, John Deere RX, Precision, Pro 600, 700, Raven, Trimble. So let's just say we wanted this as a John Deere file. We want to download it. Um, this download is going to start and uh, it's going to download my desktop here. And then I can uh, upload that onto a USB drive and then take it with me into my tractor. So that's, um, that's as simple and easy as uh, prescription gets uh, with the FieldView Seed Scripts tool. Um, you, as I mentioned before, uh, we do have manual prescriptions we can create as well. And again, we go through a similar process. We'd go create new, we can go start. And uh, the prescription I just made uh, serves here as a reference. If we wanna start with that one, we could use the same zones or we could draw uh, new zones and basically go through um, the same process. So it's really a step-by-step -step guide. I realize we're running out of time, so I'm not gonna take you through that um, in its entirety on, uh, on fertility, but um, lots of neat opportunities as we get into scripting, um, and it doesn't really need to be a, a, a time-consuming, laborious task. Uh, it really makes it quite fun. So um, as I wrap up, um, I wanted to just share a couple of things with you. So first of all, if you're interested in scripting in FieldView, um, seed scripts are traditionally a buck at uh, $1.50 per acre. Um, now you got to go in and select your fields. You got to click on the buy button first, and then you'll see this view. You'll select your fields that you want to buy a prescription for so they can become uh, a field view pro field. Then you'll be able to see the tool that I just went through on prescriptions. If you want to try this for a hundred acres and you know, you just want to uh, get a feel for it. Uh, we have a promo code here. It's called Canid. Vscript 150, so the, the A is off Canada, 
Um, and uh, if you want to just write that down, you can use that as a promo code, which will get you 100 free acres of field view seed scripts. And uh, hopefully that uh, just helps you to get comfortable with it and helps un to understand the value. Because one of the neat things about doing this in field view is uh, when you can stream in all of your variable rate populations, then when you bring in that harvest data, you can start to understand what populations were really optimal on your farm. Um, and you can really do some validation through the analysis tools that we saw uh, Dan and Lydia go through with us today. So, um, so write that down, Canon B script 150, and, uh, and hopefully uh, this becomes a, a great gateway for you to take advantage of optimizing your inputs. I really do wanna thank you uh, for joining us today. Um, really appreciate your time and hope that this uh, really helps improve your confidence uh, as we go from here. Uh, feel free to uh, reach out to us if uh, you have further questions. And uh, there again is our, our support numbers. Uh, a lot of very qualified staff ready to take your questions if you uh, need them. And uh, feel free to follow us on Twitter at, at FieldViewCanada as well. Thank you very much. Take care.